In this video, I am going to discuss about cash budget. Cash budget is also known as the cash flow forecast. A cash budget is a financial plan that outlines the cash inflows and outflows of a business over a specific period of time, usually a month or a year. The purpose of a cash budget is to help a business manage its cash flow and ensure that it has enough cash to meet its financial obligations and investment needs. A cash budget typically includes information about the expected cash inflows from sales, investments and financing activities, as well as the expected cash outflows for expenses, investments and debt repayment. So simply under cash budget, management accountants have to consider the cash inflows and cash outflows for a specific period of time. Now let's talk about how to prepare a cash budget. These points are very important. Only cash items are considered. Non-cash items are not considered, such as depreciation, amortization, bad debt, gains and losses of long-term assets and liabilities. Cash flows are considered in the cash basis accounting. What is cash basis accounting? In cash basis accounting, cash inflows and cash outflows are recorded when cash is actually received or paid rather than when they are earned or incurred. Simply this means the cash inflows and cash outflows are recognized when the cash is paid or received. Now let's do an example question so that you can understand these points clearly. Following are budgeted for the next year for company A. Calculate the cash balance at the end of the next year. So these are the transactions for the next year. What we have to do is we have to calculate the cash balance at the year end of the next year. They have given us the opening cash balance and then sales revenue, annual depreciation, proceeds from selling a machinery and a gain and finally annual salaries and wages. First of all, what we have to do is we have to identify the cash flows and the non-cash flows. So the opening cash balance is a cash item. So we consider this item. Under sales revenue, they have given two points. We have to consider each point at a time and calculate the cash items. Then they have given us the annual depreciation of machinery. Depreciation is a non-cash item. So this amount will not be considered under cash budget. And they have given us the proceeds from selling a machinery on cash. This is a cash item, so we consider this under cash budget. And they have given us the gain earned by selling the machinery, which is $500. We do not consider this value under cash budget, because this is a non-cash item. What is a gain? Let's say there is a machine A. The book value or the cost of this machine is $1000, let's say. And the company has managed to sell this machinery for $1,200. This is the proceeds. We consider this value under the cash budget. And now you can see there is a difference between these two values. This is known as the gain. And let's say the company has managed to sell this machinery only for $800. Now again, this is the proceeds. And again you can see there is a difference between these two values. This is a loss. We consider the proceeds for the cash budgets but we do not consider gains or losses under the cash budget because these are non-cash items. And they have finally given us the annual salaries and wages. These are cash items. Now we can prepare the cash budget. We can start from the opening cash balance. So the opening cash balance is 23,000. This is a positive value. This is a positive value because this is a reserve of cash. Then there is the sales revenue, 46,000. The first point says that 3% of the total sales are expected to be bad debt, which means 3% of this sales revenue will not be received to the company. So what we have to do is we have to calculate the revenue that will be earned after the bad debt, which is equal to 
46,000 multiplied by 3 percent and then this value has to be deducted from the 46,000. Now let's calculate this amount. So the bad debt is equal to $1,380. Now we have to calculate the sales revenue that will be earned by the company after the bad debt which is equal to 46,000 minus the bad debt amount. This is equal to 44,620. As we discussed earlier, we do not consider the bad debt under cash budget. And the second point says that credit sales are 55% and this will receive in one year's time. So what we have to do is we have to calculate the cash sales for the next year which is equal to 45% because 55% of the sales are credit sales. So the rest of the sales will be on cash. So 45% of 44,620. This will be the cash sales. So this is equal to $20,079. So this will be the cash amount the company will receive in the next year. The 55% will be received in the year after the next year. Remember that we are calculating the cash budget for the next year, not for the year after the next year. So this 55% of the sales revenue will be recognized for the year after the next year. So the sales revenue is equal to $20,079. This is a cash inflow. So this is a positive value. We are not going to consider the depreciation and then we have to recognize the proceeds. This is also a cash inflow. Proceeds is equal to $2,300. This is a cash inflow. So this is a positive value. And finally they have given the annual salaries and wages. So salaries and wages are equal to 13000 this is a negative value because this is a cash outflow. We indicate negative cash flows by using the parentheses. So finally we can calculate the cash balance for the year end of next year. Closing cash balance. So this is equal to $32,379. This is the closing cash balance for the next year. This amount will be the opening cash balance for the year after the next year. So the opening cash balance for the year after the next year will be 32,379. As now you can see this 32,379 is a positive value. This means this is a surplus value. Let's say the balance is a negative value. So this will be a deficit which means the company has not enough money to operate the business. If the cash balance at the end of the period is positive, it is known as a cash surplus. This is where cash inflows are higher than the cash outflows. When there is a cash surplus, the following options are available for the companies. The cash surplus can be reinvest in the company or invest in short term investments or it can be used to repay the debts. If the cash balance at the end of the period is negative, it is known as a cash deficit, which means cash outflows are higher than cash inflows. When there is a potential cash deficit, the following options can be exercised by the company. Delay the capital expenditure. Delay payables. Reduce costs or cast down discretionary costs. Bank overdraft. Bank overdraft is a short term finance method. If they want, they can go for a long term finance. Most common long term finances are bank loans or share issue. Now let's discuss about the advantages of cash budgets. Better cash management. Cash budgeting helps businesses to manage their cash flows more effectively by identifying potential cash shortages or surpluses in advance. This enables them to take proactive measures to address any shortfalls such as arranging short-term financing or delaying non-essential expenses and make use of surpluses such as investing in new opportunities or paying down debt. Improved decision making by providing a clear picture of expected cash inflows and outflows 
Cash budgeting enables businesses to make more informed decisions about investment opportunities, financing options and spending priorities. This helps them to allocate resources more effectively and make strategic choices that support long-term growth and profitability. Increased accountability. Cash budgeting encourages businesses to take more disciplined approach to financial management and accountability by setting clear targets for cash inflows and cash outflows and tracking actual performance against these targets. This promotes transparency and accountability and can help businesses to build credibility and trust with investors, lenders and other stakeholders. Better communication. Cash budgeting helps to facilitate communication and collaboration between different departments and stakeholders within a business by providing a common framework for understanding and managing cash flows. This can help to break down silos, promote collaboration and foster a shared sense of purpose and responsibility across the organization. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.